Hey y'all, it's Lee with LA3D Print and Repair. This video is a continuation of my previous video on fixing stuck filament. So what I didn't talk about in that video is if you happen to switch your machine off hot, what can happen is the filament will get stuck in the PTFE like we've got here. So you can see we've got some filament in there. It's not going anywhere. So if this happens to you, I don't, I don't care how it happened or why you switched your machine off hot, just know in the future you shouldn't do that or basically the heat will creep into the PTFE liner and you won't be able to print. So why does this happen? Let's just talk 30 seconds about why this happens. Um, so fundamentally, um, this is a PTFE liner here and this is a piece of filament and if I jam that in there, you can see that it should travel smoothly through that entire part. Um, what happens is, Let's take a look at the hot end. You know, the fan that blows on here is designed to keep this area cool. So what is what is going on with your hot end? If you haven't seen this because you got your machine pre-assembled, pre well, get ready, you're going to. Um, if you did, well, this should look familiar. But what's going on here, we've got several parts. We have the nozzle, we have the block, we have the heat break, we have the heat sink, and the heat sink, as you might expect, with the aid of the fan, this is not the fan, is able to keep that area cool and keep the filament rigid through the area of the heat sink until it gets into the heat break and then becomes molten once it reaches the heat block and the nozzle and then gets deposited on your print. If you switch the machine off hot, the heat will rise, melt the filament inside of the PTFE, and it's not going anywhere. So fundamentally what we're going to be doing is swapping the PTFE in the hot end. Um, we're going to be having the thermistor and the heater still connected and we're going to be servicing it on the machine. But there's a little collar at the top so that needs to be depressed. And then once we depress it, the PTFE liner should be removed easily. And then the other key thing is when we put it back, we want to make sure there's no play in it. So we want to pull the collar up and push the PTFE down at the same time so that that's locked in there so that we're not getting any kind of buildup of filament in the heated area. So that's pretty much it. Fundamentally, to prevent this from happening, make sure you wait until your machine gets below 100 degrees before you switch it off. The Prusa's fan is thermostatically controlled and monitored. So it's okay to leave the machine on all the time as long as it's cooled down. The fan doesn't wear out. On something like a Creality, the front extruder fan runs 24-7. So also on top of the fact that they include a pretty cheap fan, um, you know, it's encouraged to keep your machine switched off, but you need to make sure it's cooled down before you switch it off to prevent heat, heat creep in the extruder. So we're going to go into how to swap the PTFE liner in an MK3S right here. Uh, as far as tools, um, what you're going to need is just a standard 2.5 millimeter driver. Um, the, the Allen wrench included with the kit is just fine. I will be using a uh, WIA driver. Uh, sorry, this is a WERA, but I also use WIA. And then one other thing to note about genuine components. Um, this is a heat break from Amazon and, um, you know, looks fine, except, hey, check it out. Just happens to be PTFE lined. Um, you try and run this, it'll run fine for PLA, but it's not going to run for PET. So, you know, when you're replacing components in your machine, make sure you're getting genuine components. Um, E3D resellers are not hard to find. Uh, E3D has a whole list. My preference here in the United States is Philostruder. But, um, yeah, when you're getting components, don't just buy the cheap stuff on Amazon. These components will last the lifetime of the machine if they're maintained properly. There's no reason to be just buying stuff willy-nilly just to fix your machine. So, that being said, if you have problems, Here's my number. Reach out if we need help, but uh, let's get into the process so you can fix your printer. Cheers. Okay, so just to give you an idea of what we're going to be doing once we get inside of here, uh, I've got a basically a partial dummy extruder here that we're going to take a look at. So what we've got going on is the hot end, and it's clamped in by the motor, and we've got the front cover here. So the motor is attached to this front cover piece, and that's retained by these two 45s in the back. This is normally going to stay on the back of the extruder pin to here, fan on the front. So what we're going to do is remove the front two screws here, which is going to let the fan shroud come off, remove the fan, and then remove the front cover. Once the front cover is removed, we'll have access to the hot end. If we were cleaning it, this would be a great place to be. But because we actually need to remove the PTFE, we need to get one step further. So to do that, we remove the two screws at the back of the motor. And with those removed, we can kind of tilt the motor back and over the rail and have access to the PTFE to swap it out. So fundamentally, once we get access to that, 
This is all going to be retained by the wires at the back, the heater and the thermistor. So we're essentially going to basically push the collar down, remove the PTFE, put in a new PTFE, and then making sure that that's seated properly. We can't have any play there. We need to make sure we pull up on the collar and push down on the PTFE to lock it in place so it seats properly. And if this gets rotated, it should stay solid. If it doesn't, you do want to make sure it gets tightened down before you reinstall it. But that's the fundamentals of what we're going to attempt, so now let's do it on the machine. All right, let's get to work. So here we have the MK3S extruder, as you should have on your machine. So the first step we're going to do is go ahead and remove the fan and place that off into the belts here. We got two fasteners here. Uh, this one could be an 18, most likely it's a 20. Let's go ahead and remove that, set it aside. Got a little container here, 20 here. And then with this guy removed, we do want to be careful of the hex nut that it threads into. It's actually on the front cover piece. So now that the fan is basically disconnected, we can just flip this guy just kind of stick it between the rails for temporary storage. So next thing we're going to pay attention to, let's just concentrate on the front cover first since that actually needs to come off first. Uh, we'll get into removing the uh, idler door and uh, the uh, motor to get actual access to the hot end next. But uh, let's concentrate on the front cover. Uh, two screws on the front here. Let's go ahead and do the bottom one first. This is a 20 millimeter. And this is what's actually retaining the fan shroud. So once you get it partially removed, just be ready to catch that. And then make sure you don't lose the square nut that's in the back of that. One square nut in the back corner there. So I'm just going to stick that in a little bucket of fasteners for now and continue removing the 20 mil. And then up here we've got a 14. Bingo. With those loose, we can go ahead and loosen these guys. Retaining the front cover, 245s. And then a little tip here to make this a little bit easier. If you get a fingernail behind the right one, you can go ahead and pull that guy completely out, 45. And then this guy, sneak the cover forward and then sneak it back, leaving the screw in place, then pull it forward again with the 45, route the wires over, continue pulling, and bingo, you're out. Oh, and then look, the little hex nut that retains the fan lives right there, so make sure you don't lose that. And then we'll just go ahead and set this guy aside. <clears throat> At this point, you will want to take note, um, right here, if you've got the old part, it could be uh, melted. See if I've got an example here to show you. Um, I've mentioned this previously, but it's just something good to call out whenever this part comes up. So previously this part was real fragile. That one's actually broken, but uh, they beefed it up. And so if you have the previous version, C2 I believe it is, or C1, uh, the C2 is the factory part, R5 is the home printed part, and they should be in PET. Um, actually, we can go ahead and grab one of our 45s and stick it back in here. This can actually stay together as a unit. I'm going to set that aside. And then uh, now our hot end is exposed. And again, if we were trying to clean up the hot end, this might be a good place to be. But what we actually need to do is swap the PTFE, so we need to remove the motor next. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen the idler door completely. This is the one with the spring, so don't lose the spring, 45 with the spring. That will allow the door to come open. I'm just going to keep my angles consistent here, I'm not going to bother switching the camera angle. And then there's two screws, remember I pointed them out before in the dummy, um, two screws holding the motor in now. I'm just going to start with the hinge screw. These are both 45s. And when I remove that, that's going to allow the door to come out, so I'm going to set aside the door. Another tip about the idler door, it's a good time to make sure that your idler is spinning freely. That should be spinning freely, otherwise there could be uh, debris on the bearings in there, needle bearings. So 
Now we've got one more screw at the back side of this motor. And we can just leave that in place so it's a little bit easier to secure it. But just for reference, that's another 45. Once we do that, straight away and lean it over the rail. You can see now we have clean access to the hot end. It's kind of tilting out on its own, which is important to note. It does need to get kind of placed up into that, uh, that uh, clamping area there. And now that we've got access to the hot end, just like I demonstrated before, we're going to go ahead and press. Oops, I guess I didn't really show that very good. Let's get this reseated. We're going to press down on the collar. Press down on the collar and pull up on the PTFE. I'm trying not to drop it. Then you're going to get your new PTFE out of your spares kit. You're going to jam that all the way down and then you're going to pull it up. And then notice how there's a little bit of play there. You need to eliminate that play by getting your thumbnail underneath the collar, jamming that down, and then making sure that that can't move anywhere. Now, of course, if your PTFE has filament jammed in it, it might pull out just fine, it might not. So if it doesn't pull out, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to get yourself some pliers and get that collar pushed down while you grab on that sucker with pliers while it's heated, and you have to be really careful in that process. Um, at that point, you know, you're getting into hot areas, you might just want to contact me for some guidance, or if this is happening to you, maybe request that I demonstrate that procedure. You might be willing to do that. So anyway, um, once you've extricated your filament, uh, you got your PTFE reseated in there properly and it's locked in. I'm just going to go ahead and place your hot end back in its place. Take the motor, making sure to capture the motor cables in that little sort of mouth there. Guiding that over the fan wires and straight back onto the assembly. Keeping these, there should be a nice service loop here to allow you to kind of rotate it over. And like I said, I left that one fastener in the back corner still in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the 45. At this point, you don't have to hold anything because the hot end is basically retained by the motor face. Now I'm going to take my front cover and reinstall that. You can kind of loot to install it the easiest way. Kind of keep these guys out a little bit. Guide them into their place and then lean it up, push them in place, maneuver the motor wires behind, push them all the way in and then go ahead and secure those. At this point, it's a good idea to finally check because when you tighten these, it's what's, what's going to finally secure the hot end. Make sure your hot end block is clocked completely straight and in line so it seats well in the fan shroud. Cool. Front cover secure. Um, I'm just going to work my way from the top down, so I'm going to go ahead and reinstall my idler door. Forty-five mil there, and this guy does not need to be tight, just snug. And then forty-five with the spring. couple turns past flush, three to four threads exposed on the right side. It's all you need. Don't over tighten that. Okay, let's go ahead and do our fan on the left hand side. 14 mil on the top. Make sure you tell the difference if you, these all can be 20s, but if you have an 18 on the top, it'll only really go well on the top. 
You can't use an 18. Can't use an 18 here, really. It doesn't it doesn't stick through enough. This is a 20. So the trick with this is start it. Start it until the head is ready. Get your square nut properly seated in there. Make sure that doesn't go for a ride. Hold it up in place. Make sure it's not angled too much. And if you sense resistance, don't just keep don't just keep doing it. Back it off. Maybe flip the square nut. Try again. You don't want that galled up. Once that's secure, go ahead and reinstall our fan. Like I said, this one can be an 18 as long as the hex nut is uh, installed deep enough into the 45 degree support. And then 20 here with the hex nut supporting it at the back. Okay, two fan screws installed, uh, part fan screws installed, two extruder fan screws installed, two motor screws installed, extruder idler screw installed. So we're all reassembled and ready to go. So, hey, uh, we're here if you need us. Um, I hope you didn't find this video because you were totally stranded, but uh, if you need us, we're here to, we're here to help. So. Uh, thanks for watching and um, happy printing.